please tell us the name and how you joined the NSAS protests. Okay, my name is Akin Kolawoli and I joined the protests. What, what, what do you do? I'm a software engineer. Okay. okay, I joined. How old are you? I'm 25. Okay, I joined the protest because of the because of how much I have been victimized a lot of times. I mean, I have had issues with these guys, and it's not something that I wanted to let slide. They have harassed me a couple of times, and I felt like it was a time for me to make my voice heard. So yes, that's why I joined. Okay. So the, the evening of October 20, mm -hmm. tell us what happened. Okay, so I went there um, because I wanted to protest. I went there because I wanted my voice to be heard. And then, having got there, we all started singing and raising our flags just like we were instructed to do. Towards the evening period, towards evening time, um, this was around after six or seven years about, yeah, we heard that the soldiers were coming in and everybody stay down and raise your flags and that's what we all did. And then prior to this time, I had met a friend and um, we were together. And what was his name? Just, his name is Ibai. Okay. Yeah, we were just in and um, I mean, such a great guy. He's also a creative and um, the graphics designer to be precise. Yeah, let's take it one after the other. So just came? Yes. What happened when they arrived? So when they, when they came in at first, we were asked to raise our flags and keep on singing the national anthem. That's what we did. And then when they came at first, there was no, there was no shooting until they started approaching. And when it was happening, um, they opened fire. Okay. And then they started shooting right. Yes, they started shooting at the protesters. Mm -hmm. So what did you do when you were I mean, what would I do? Everybody started running for their lives. Mm -hmm. At first, we were also told to stay down, to stay down. But yeah, while staying down, I mean, you have to also ensure that your life is not... Is not do I say your life is not endangered? Because <laughs> technically, your life is already endangered. So you just have to ensure that you are at your best and then you are not caught off guard. So yes, that's what I did. Mm -hmm. So you told us your friend Ifyari was killed. Mm -hmm. How did that happen? So um, we were all together, myself and Ifyari, okay. and um, at every point in time when the shooting ceased, we tried to make our way out okay. while running. At every point in time when the shooting ceased? Yeah, at every point in time when the shooting ceased, okay. or when the shooting subsided, we tried to make our way out by running. Mm -hmm. and at every single time when we run, we always ensure that we were down and tried to stay down. But at this time, it had stopped and then we decided to run out and then we kept on running because we didn't even know where we were running to. Okay. So, I mean, everybody, at that point in time, you don't even know what you're doing because the only thing that is in your mind at that time is to stay alive. Okay. Yeah. So, we kept on running and I kept on running and the same as he kept on running. But we, we ensure that we were not very far from each other. The, the thing I remember vividly was I was in front and then he was at the back. And then as, as we were running, I mean, you are ensuring that you stayed alive. And then the next thing I heard was, in don't die. And then I looked back and then I saw it was the guy who I was with. Okay. I mean, it wasn't something that I don't know, man, but it wasn't it wasn't a very good experience for me because I turned, I looked, and it was the same guy. It was the same guy who I had just spoken to. What, what did you see? What, what exactly did you see? Bullets. So I, the, the thing was, you would literally see blood, him covered in a pool of blood. Okay. And then you start hearing people. Because, I mean, there were people who were there. A lot of persons were selfless. So help some of these people who were shot, right? And then, there and then, it's just, I started hearing, in don't die, in don't die, and the people left. A couple of persons who were with him, left just a few persons were still there. 
You said his name is Ifyanyi. Yes. You don't know his son? No, I don't know his son. Okay. You met on the day of the protest yes, on October, that day, October yes. 20. What else do you know about him? Who was he? What was the occupation? What are the things you remember so he, about him? So, I mean, we exchanged pleasantries, right? Okay. And, and the only thing I, I know of him, I mean, one day is not just enough for you to know a couple of things mm-hmm. about people, right? Mm-hmm. But one thing I got from him is he is a creator, he's a graphics designer. Graphics designer? Yeah, and it is. Do you know where he lived? No, I don't know where he lived. Anything about his parents, his family? No, I don't. I mean, it was just the very first day. First day. I met him. Okay. Yeah. And then, I mean, because we shared um, something in common, yeah, it was very easy for us to connect. What was that thing you shared in common? He's a, he's a great he's designer. Did he I mean, tell you why he joined the protest? I mean, same reason why I joined the protest, apparently. He has been harassed. He has been harassed a couple of times. Okay. Yes, and then looking at him, he's such a very gentle person who you know that he this kind of person wouldn't wouldn't do anything. And he has been harassed a lot of times. So the same reason why I joined was the same reason why. What what else can you say about Ishan? What else? Do you remember anything he told you about himself? Not really. I mean every the, the, the whole focus was on having a better governance. Letting your voice hard. That was like the focus. I missed other things, but the major focus was that. So there was no so much time for a lot of chit chat, chit chat thinking. But yes, we did talk, and then that was how I was able to know this is what he is. He has been harassed a couple of times at different points on the island and then at um, different places. Physically, what did it look like? So if I is fair complexion, mm-hmm. yeah, if I is fair complexion, and then he had like bushy hair, mm-hmm. like the afro, yeah, kind of afro, yeah, mm-hmm. and then he also had beards, full mm-hmm. beards, yes, fuller than yours, um, but just about the same size, just about the same size. Mm-hmm. Anything else? Yeah, yeah. Nah. No, no. A lot of people don't believe that. Death indeed occurred on that night. As someone whose friend went down, how how I have to be honest with you, right? Does that make you feel? I have not recovered from the trauma. Say, I, I I always like to say that we're having this interview December thirty, and this is happened October twenty. That's two months and ten days. I still haven't recovered. I haven't recovered from the trauma because you know the truth is, I feel like when you face death. It's a different thing and when you hear it. Hmm. You see, funny enough, right, prior to, the, to this time when the, the whole shooting occurred, I mean, I had witnessed people brutally shot by policemen. That's seen it happen. Yes, I have seen it happen. I have seen it happen. So, for people who do not believe, for people who do not believe, I feel like what, what what they should do is probably take a poll and request for people to just come out and talk. Okay. Because because you literally would not how to put it, you literally would not be able to to see anything because you are in there.